There are some things we see as children that we don't really want to remember. Some things that sit in the back of our minds and rattle every once in a while to remind us it's there. Such things exist in many forms, but this one in particular is a memory of which I am afraid to bring back up. But that is why we are here, isn't it? To explore the dark looming essence of this film. Let's begin, shall we? Hello everyone and welcome back to Was It Good, the series where I look back at movies that I loved as a child and probably many of you loved as well, just to see if they were as good as we thought. And today's topic is Hoodwinked. And Hoodwinked is such a weird, unique movie, I guess we could call it. It was a well-written film with good actors, good music. It made me laugh when I was a kid. You know, it was just fun to see a bunch of like fairy tale creatures play out like a more comedic parody style of their stories. You know, we're talking animals coexist with humans and there's like witches and stuff like that. Um, no, 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 it's not. It's not the same as Shrek. All right. It's different. Okay. It's unique. I guess we could say. Okay, let's just put this out of the way right now. So no one talks about it again, the whole video. It was pretty similar to Shrek when it came to the concept of fairy tale creatures, you know, doing fairy tale things in funny ways. Some people called it a copy, some people called it a cash grab, but the movie has its own jokes. It has its own references and it has its own animation. Oh boy, do I remember that animation. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I look at this type of animation, the first word that comes to mind is original, am I right? Because let's be real, every creepy kid YouTube channel has based their animation off of this movie. It's me, baby Kata. I have a huge diarrhea. Seriously. It's terrifying. But to be perfectly honest, I never really found anything that creepy about the animation when I was a kid. Now, that is something, I guess. Maybe I was just stupid. I don't know. But the big confusing part about why this animation is so bad is this was made by the Weinstein Company, which, if you guys don't know, is a huge independent film studio. It made amazing movies such as Inglorious Bastards, Django Unchained, Shark Bait, and um, a Dougal. Okay, on second thought, maybe it was a cash grab. I mean, it was the first year of this studio, so I guess we could give them some flack. And within that year, they made some pretty bad films, just like Sharkbait, Dougal, and Love Wreck. But the outliers of this year, the movies that weren't awful, but kind of had some little bit good to it, was The Brothers Grimm, and yes, Hoodwinked. I mean, this movie was stacked with great actors. Anne Hathaway, Glenn Close, Patrick Warburton, Exhibit, Andy Dick, Tom Kenny. Like, they have really big names in this movie. Not only that, but the film score was pretty good. Like, they had some decent music in there. They even had Ben Folds, which I thought was hilarious because I used to listen to Ben Folds a bunch when I was young. The only info I can get on why the animation was bad is they just chose a studio who has never done a feature film called Canbar Entertainment and the only films they have ever produced is Hoodwinked, and yes, Hoodwinked 2. They actually made a sequel, and uh, that could potentially be another video. But it just doesn't make sense. How can you get all of these crazy good actors and awful animation? Another movie you could kind of compare this to is Food Fight, because Food Fight had a great cast, but for some reason, the animation was just atrocious. But the only information I can find of why they decided to make the animation like this is they were trying to go for a regular Pixar type uh, animation, but turns out it, they just weren't good enough. So they decided to scrap it and go for what they call a stop motion type animation. I mean, I guess that's one way to put it. But anyway, let's unpack this confusing conglomerate of bad animation and good actors and see what comes out. And let's see if the movie is as good as we remember when we were kids. You probably know the story. But there's more to every tale than meets the eye. Somebody. Okay, okay, I know, I get it. They start out with the book, like Shrek, when they have the narrator and talk about how things aren't... It, it's similar, okay? But it's not the same. So how the film starts is a basic story of Red Riding Hood where she goes to see her Graham Graham, but there's a wolf there instead. But there is a twist. Red Riding Hood gets attacked. Grandma comes out of the closet and Doom with the axe jumps through the window. Bazinga. So for those of you who've never seen this film, this is a basic mystery type whodunit 
thing where we start off with the scenario and then they break it down by going through each character plot points while they intersect with each other while they're talking about it and then things start clearing up and then you're like oh things aren't as they seem and honestly i give credit to the writers it is hard to pull off writing like this where you do the plot points intersecting with each other it's a pretty hard way to write and they did a decent job at it but we skip forward to huge crime scene investigation like holy shit caution tape helicopters and full news team damn if there was that much help every time there was one break in life would definitely be a lot easier but big bear cop and bird person walk into the house but they're mentioning something called the goody bandit Fix it. any connection with the recipe robberies you mean the goody bandit could be. A little bit of foreshadowing. Little Miss Rosie Capes making covert deliveries to the goody tycoon. <gasps> Wolfie tries to eat them both. Then crazy flannel pants with the axe here busting swinging vigilante style. Take them downtown, boys. What? What, you're just gonna close the book on everything? Pun intended. You brought 20 cops, multiple helicopters, a bunch of news teams have arrived. Just so you can walk in and be like, book them. Uh, uh, yeah, book him. Uh, yeah, book him. Don't you think you may be overprepared a little bit there, buddy? Now, the main thing that I appreciate about this film is the amount of self-aware comedy they put in there. Take him downtown, boys. Nah, uh, it's the woods, chief. We don't have a downtown. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I realize that self-aware comedy does not always mean good. Sometimes it's just an excuse for bad puns, but I feel like they really sprinkle in the self-aware comedy here and there just to give it a little charming nod to the audience and make you feel a little bit more like comfortable with it, I guess. But anytime there's like a cliche, a trope, or maybe something that's quote unquote cringe, they always give a little nod to it saying like, I mean, it is cliche, but at least we know it is. Nikki Flippers. What are you doing here? This is my case. Well. Is that a frog who has a dog as a pet? So the world building is a little bit confusing, uh, if you can't tell, because sometimes it's every single animal lives alongside humans, but then you got this shit. Who knows, maybe it's just some weird fetish shit the dog is into. Yes, master, put a chain on me. I'll be your little pup pup. Okay, this is getting a little bit weird. I'm gonna move on. But anyway, Flippers is the detective's name. He goes to the chief and says, chief, this ain't what it seems. And I think it's a little bit dumb that his reasoning for being there isn't because he's curious about the case. He's just walking his, you know, BDSM dog down the road and all of a sudden stumbled upon them talking about this. And he's like, I have no idea of the situation and I don't really know anything of what happened, but maybe it's not as it seems. So Red, why don't you explain how this all began? Well, like any other day. Dear God, the animation is so bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to not talk about it that much, but what? what is this? What were they thinking? <laughs> and then they have a weird out of place song. And I would just like to mention this real quick. When I watched this, after not watching it for many years, I completely forgot there was music in this. I forgot it was like partially a musical because sometimes it just feels weird and forced because how they set up the beginning, you know, it's like a, a mystery a, a, a thriller trying to figure out who's the bad guy. Then they have like a fruity little musical number. It just felt weird. Even when I was a kid, I remember it felt weird that there was music in it. But once you get further in the film, it kind of, that, that weird feeling kind of goes away. Someone show me a different day. Oh, look, she's singing to birds. Thumb. Stop it. No, it's, it's not like Shrek. It's not, okay. You oh, God. Look, look at that beautiful landscape. Seriously, what is even the point? Okay, okay, guys, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe the textures just haven't loaded in yet. I was stupid thinking this was okay as a kid. And then after a YMCA reference, Creepy Bunny comes over to Red to talk about how the Muffin Man had all of his recipes stolen. Aren't you helping the Muffin Man today? The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! The Muffin Man. No, it's not the same. It's, it's different, okay? It's unique. Okay, maybe it's a little bit somewhere. Okay, I know I'm being a little bit nitpicky here, but... What even is that sound effect? It would just be better if you put nothing. I mean, they did put nothing the rest of the movie. This is the only time he's had weird jumping noises. The rest of the film, it never happens. I, I, I just don't get why they put that there. I don't know, maybe they thought of an idea and they put it there and then forgot that they left it. So Red is riding through the woods and she notices almost every single goodie shop is closing for good because their recipes were stolen. Yeah, 
just like just like SpongeBob. And can we just talk about this for a second? Um, do they not have copies? Do they not have like memories, like their brains uh, of their recipes? I guess it's just like a checkmate for them. Like their recipes are gone. Business over, baby. Like we're going bankrupt. We can't. There's no possible way we can remember that recipe. But mom, why didn't you get any copies? We don't have printers in this world, you dumb bitch. But how did you get it on the paper in the first place? You know, fuck you. Just imagine you just misplacing your recipe by accident. Whoop. Oh, looks like we're going out of business. I, I, I lost the recipe. With the goodie bandit on the loose, recipes were becoming an endangered species. Recipes an endangered species? What are recipes in this universe? Families are literally getting evicted because their recipes are stolen. Is this the only way people make money in these woods? So Red tells her grandma about the goodie bandit. She gets a little bit scared that their recipe is going to get stolen and they'll be kicked out of their house for good. Then Red goes through her edgy teen phase and reads a faraway places book implying that <laughs> not the same it's not saying far far away it's, it's not no it's saying far away places two different things stop but anyway she gets sad because she can't she can't go far away because she's just a kid are you going somewhere far away no the world is too dangerous for me and then she drops her book and then kills someone you threatening rock hits their window and now she knows someone wants her shit so now it's time to stop being a kid and start being a hardcore rebel. Are they gonna get your recipes? What the fuck you could talk? Yeah, I'm gonna take that recipe all the way up to the mountain with my bike cable car. I'm just gonna stop asking questions. So the doors open conveniently in the cable car and then she falls, not dying because plot armor. Then Big Bad Wolf comes in and wants her snacks, but she ain't having no wolfie today because she has pepper spray. We get introduced to the worst and best character in the entire film. The witch done put a spell on me 37 years ago. And now I gotta sing everything I say. And let me tell you, that might not be the only thing that got cursed because oh lord, that animation is just that's something else. Everything? That's right. You just talked just now. Did I? Did I? And then Goat does a musical number, and I'm just going to say this right now. It is probably the best musical number in this film. And I mean, sure, that's not really saying much, but still, I remember enjoying the Goat song when I was younger. I still enjoy it now. Oh, now they're on a minecart. Now they are flying. Now Grandma's ghost tells Red to use her hood. Now Goat is flying. That's right, fool. Now I'm a flying talking donkey. No, that's not what I meant, damn it. He's a goat, all right? Not a donkey! Now we get to hear the wolf's perspective with some intense reference music while they walk past each other ominously. Again, I do like a lot of the small little references in the movie. I don't feel like they shoved it in people's faces. It's just sprinkled here and there. Some of them might be a little bit overkill, but I mean, it, it's pretty good. Some of it's pretty good. You saying this guy's a cop? No worse. He's a reporter. So the wolf ends up being a reporter for the newspaper. And he was just trying to find clues of the goody bandit. He wasn't being a big, bad wolf. He was being a normal-sized good wolf. I spent the last six months undercover investigating the so-called goody bandit. As more recipes go missing, the trail has gotten hotter. Wait. Was that racist? Or should I say speciesists? Is that, is that even a thing? I don't know. Food is dangerous. Even furries exist in this world. What would that even mean? Is that like insulting? Is that like a fetish thing? Or are they just humans looking like animals in a world where animals are the equivalent as humans? There's so much I need to know about this. Oh. Creepy. And here's another great example of taking tropes and cliches of fairy tales and kind of laughing at them and making people realize that we get it. Switchy, you scared me. Oh boy, now we get introduced to my least favorite character, Squirrel, which is a trope in a lot of kids' movies. They have to have like a token kid lovable type character. The only reason they're there is just to make kids giggle. Kind of like the squirrel in Ice Age. It was kind of the same thing. As a kid, it's probably your favorite character. But as an adult, I just, just wanna, just wanna grab him by the front. It's okay, it's okay. 
That's all right. Just, just get out of there. Tell him where you it's, it's all over. I hate it. Shepard comes by and sees me talking to you. I'm gonna get the crook. What the fuck is that? What is that? Is that a mafia boss sheep? This is the funniest shit I've seen all day. Did he just drop a hundo for some quick info? That wolf is loaded. Long story short, big bad wolf thinks red is the bad guy. <laughs> Oh, now we see he wasn't growling at all. He was just hungry wungy. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> and he didn't even war at all. He just got his tail shot in the camera. We'll never catch her. Sexy! <laughs> Whoa, that was her. We passed her. Right here's fine. He took a fucking taxi. Okay, you know, I fucking love this movie. That is a good joke. That's a good fucking joke. Taxi in the woods. Then Creepy Bunny shows them a shortcut to Graham Graham's house so they can get there before Red. Then they end up playing a little bit of Minecraft. Then after a little bit of dynamite shenanigans, they end up at Graham Graham's before Red does. And then preceding scene plays out again. Now one of the most interesting characters in the entire film big German guy. This character, I assume, is supposed to be the misunderstood guy who seems like a big, bad dude who would beat people up, but then you find out he's a soft, lovable guy with layers. Ogres have layers. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You know what? It's Shrek. It is Shrek, all right? But out of everyone in this film, his animation is the creepiest. I mean, just look at his arms. What are those? Buzz Bunyan Cream has the soothing formula to make the bunions head for the hills. Yo, you about to make me head for the hills, you know what I'm saying? This guy's a loon. Watch it, Chief. My mama's half loon. <laughs> He's an actor. But I do kind of like the idea of a big buff dude with an axe who just wants to be a regular actor. Like everyone in the fucking woods, he sells a recipe. And his goodie of choice is none other than schnitzel. They really went full force with this German shit, didn't they? After all, I bring much joy to the children. Schnitzel! Mommy, mommy, I want a schnitzel stick! Oh, uh, no. 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 Stop. Ah! Ah! Anymore. So after um, the satanic ritual that uh, he ends up doing, what what were those kids? What were they? What abominations were those creatures? Okay, anyway, uh, after the whole satanic ritual thing, he gets a call back from his director and he says, Find an axe, start swinging, okay? What could possibly go wrong? Well, after a comedic moment of not knowing how to chop, uh, he ends up being able to one slice any tree. This man is a tank. But now he sees big tree and scream and chop. Then the tree fall toward house and roll down. Uh, die, 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 fall. He, fuck it. He crashes into the house. <laughs> now it's finally time to hear Graham Graham's side of the story. And this is where shit gets real. Or dare I say it. Epic. What are you hiding, old girl? Hey, Chief! Check this out. I noticed you have three G's tattooed on the back of your neck. They actually make a triple X reference. Out of all of the action movies in the world, you pick one of the worst ones. I think it was big around the time that that movie was out, so I guess, I guess I'll let it slide. I'm not like other grannies. I never did like the quilting bees and the bingo parlors. I'd rather live life to the extent. Green. What's Graham Graham gonna do? Snowboard down a mountain while bad guys are chasing her with snowballs and causes an avalanche and she snowboards down the avalanche while a man who's basically the Terminator is trying to kill her? That's what happens. Why is the music decent? Like, this song was specifically made for this movie. It wasn't like a, a, a band that played it and then they plopped it in there. This is actually a song made for this. Why is the animation bad? I don't get it. You can afford everything in the world. Why was the animation bad? What up, my homies? You ready to get spanked? Yeah, so what's the dizzle, Grizzle? You ready to floss that hill player? Full shizzle. Oh boy, nothing like 2000s lingo to remind me that swag and YOLO aren't as bad as we think. What he do? You 
little, you're small. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Look out. Like that. Bro, when did snowboarding get this violent? <laughs> so the Terminator does what he does best and terminates Graham Graham. Who is the bandit? <laughs> <laughs> or so he thought. Because she's hanging on it. She didn't, she didn't die. So Graham Graham causes an avalanche by pulling two grenades out of her ass, popping them back, going down the hill, snatching the freaking trophy while taking a picture, flies up in the air, gets above Red just randomly, and says use the hood even though she has no clue how Red got there, what is going on, but she yells at her to use the hood, and she uses the hood, and now she got tangled up, and now that's, the, that's why she got tangled up, because the parachute. And then the scene plays out from the beginning. So things are starting to come together now, right? So after Red finds out that Graham Graham's actually a badass triple X type, uh, snowboarder girl. I guess she gets sad because uh, Red wants to do it more with her life and Graham Graham's out doing what she wants but Red doesn't get to. She's basically being an emotional teen. Then the bandit just walks in. He just just walks in, snatches the recipes just straight up yoinked in there dude. He didn't. No one even looked. No one even noticed. After everything that's come together for those who have not seen this film who could it be? Come on, it's right underneath your nose. The person who's been there in every single plot line that has happened. He was there right in front of your face the whole time. Even me as a child could figure this out before they actually did the big reveal. Who was leading them astray at every possible moment they could? Who was trying to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula? It was the fucking goat! I knew it, that piece of shit with the flying fucking things, you dumb bitch! That minecart! Stupid singing stupid goat. I knew it the whole time. Wait. No wait. No, it, no, it it wasn't the goat Oh, it was the bunny it was the weird sound hopping bunny. I'm still gonna get that fucking goat Not the bunny and bring in a police sketch artist. No make it a cartoonist. Okay change my mind This is literally the best movie ever made like that one joke. That's it. No movies done all other movies can just go. Get out. Hoodwinked has taken the place as the best movie ever. Sorry, every other movie. What have they done to my schnitzel truck? And of course, the best evil villain strat in the world, driving around a schnitzel truck while blaring music. No one's ever gonna catch them. So in order for them to catch the cops and tell the cops they are going the wrong way, they give the squirrel coffee. And what proceeds is probably one of the biggest abominations of animation I've ever seen in my life. What about the old lady? If she's alive, she'll be back. Oh no, they didn't. Oh boy, they did. They did it. They made an I'll be back reference. This is single-handedly the best film of all time. <laughs> and kablam! Child abuse. Are you crying or having a stroke? Did she have a heart attack? What's going on with her face? When you're... Oh, please, for the love of God, not another music number. So to skip this whole terribly animated music number, the bunny's basically one of those corporate assholes who want to destroy the entire forest to build a giant thing after he's stolen every single person's recipes and then basically be the only one there. I don't know, it seems a bit bad for business that you're going to be destroying every single customer's houses, probably killing people. You're not going to have any customers left. And also, what happens if someone just walks up and yoinks his recipes? He's a bunny. Like, what is he gonna do? You've been hoodwinked, baby! So the bunny tries to kill Red by putting her in a cable car full of dynamite. A little bit of Wiley Coyote, but hey, I'm not complaining. Graham Graham ends up saving her by grinding on a cable car line with her muffin pan. I love that. And then all the bad guys also grinding on the cable car line ends up flying straight into jail. Yeah, got him. Oh, oh, but we are not done yet, fools. 
There's more to this movie. Oh no, this ends with a cliffhanger for the second movie. Yes, there's a second movie. And regardless of the awful reviews of Hoodwink 2, just how it seems like it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as good. But it leaves off with all of them becoming detectives for flippers. So it's like, it's definitely not gonna be a good sequel. But after we watched this movie, we skimmed through it, we saw all the important parts. Is this movie as good as we remember? Did the amazing cast, the decent script, and also the decent music really outweigh the terrible, terrible animation? Well, yeah, of course it did. I'll be honest, this movie surprised me watching it again because I was expecting it to be way worse than I remember. But honestly, it's not bad when it comes to just the basic writing of the movie, the comedy, and all the other stuff. To be honest, if this had actually good animation, it would probably be on par with Shrek. Obviously now, since the whole Shrek meme huge thing that happened after Shrek came out, Shrek would obviously be bigger, but I'm just saying Hoodwinked had the potential to be a really, really good movie. But alas, the animation did really screw a lot of parts up that could have been great. I wouldn't say I liked it as much as I used to because as an adult, obviously, I don't find a lot of funny funnies uh, as I used to. It's more of an appreciation, I guess, now. I mean, me as adult seeing all these references that I missed as a child, not only that, but I've had to watch this multiple times for this video. So seeing all these little clues that you don't notice your first time watching this movie here and there, it did a really good job at sprinkling these clues, which makes it fun to watch it multiple times, which is really good in a movie and really rare in a movie for it to be rewatchable. So for a kid's movie, yes, I feel like this honestly is an underrated gem and I feel like it isn't necessarily as good as I remember but in the end it definitely is a good movie and yeah I would recommend this to any child but in the end but in the end but in the end yes but this just goes to show everyone and I've talked about this before is that bells and whistles don't matter you know how shiny something is doesn't matter as long as the core foundation the writing the 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 voice acting all of those parts are there you know, the animation's kind of like secondhand. It's okay if it's bad. Sure, the animation was atrocious and sometimes did take you out of the film, but that does not make it an awful film. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate every single one of the views that you guys give me, any like that you give me, especially the subscribers. You guys are amazing and thank you for watching. And thank you for sticking up with my more spread out schedule because I am making longer, more edited videos and I'm glad you guys are enjoying them. So once again, to all you cutie booties, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Kiss, kiss, bye bye. Mwah.